Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us move on to the next problem The major product formed in the following reaction is here a diazo compound is given and the catalyst that is used is copper iodide and in the second step selenium oxide is used selenium dioxide is used this question was asked in june 2015 so we have multiple double bonds given here and we have a diazo compound and what is going to be the final product after the reaction so here when we have a diazo derivative and we have a alkene or a double bond one important reaction what can happen is a cyclopropanation reaction so we have seen so far the ch insertion reactions and uh, heteroatom carbene insertion reaction also we have seen now we are going to see a different type of reaction so here it is a cyclopropanation reaction so if you look at all the four different products that is given here they all have a cyclopropyl unit so how a cyclopropyl unit can be formed is simply when a diazo compound is treated with a metal catalyst it will produce the carbene especially copper rhodium uh, kind of uh, transition metals are used for the generation of carbene that carbene will insert itself on a alkene double bond so we end up with a cyclopropyl derivative so that is how we are going to see what is the correct product that will be formed in this reaction and the second one is when we have a selenium dioxide this is used for the oxidation so we are going to see what is the oxidized product that one of the alkene double bond is going to be oxidized so we are going to see what is the product that we are going to get if you look at uh, the four different product that is given all of them have more or less the same type of uh, the six membered and the cyclopropyl derivative that is formed we have a six membered ring with the uh, ester here also in one we have the same thing in two also we have the six membered ring with uh, alkene and uh, ester unit and uh, in the third and the fourth if you see we all have the same uh, the derivative the only thing that is different is the hydroxy unit that is present at which place so those are all the only thing that is different here so in product 2 we do not have a alkene double bond whereas in product 3 we have the one of the alkene double bond all have the hydroxy units and in 1 and 4 we have the terminal hydroxyl unit so we are going to see how the reaction actually proceeds that will tell exactly what is going to be the product so as usual we will start with the carbene reaction so the diazo unit is lost in the presence of the metal catalyst so the copper iodide uh, initiates the formation of the carbene so here again the loss of nitrogen leads to the carbene so for the simplicity we will only talk about the carbene we will not uh, use the carbenoid derivative so the first step is the formation of carbene so we have a double bond which is close to the carbene and we have uh, one double bond here we have another double bond here so we are going to see which one uh, will undergo carbene insertion reaction so we have to look for the suitably positioned double bond that will undergo cyclopropanation reaction to give the bicyclic system so we are actually showing here this carbon uh, this alkene double bond is the place where the cyclization takes place the reason is if you look at the number of atoms here is start from 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 8 9 10 and 11 so we have two types of cyclopropanation that is a bicyclic system that can be formed one is between the 6 7 double bond 
so this numbering is not according to IUPAC nomenclature. So, do not worry about that, we are only looking at the position where the cyclopropanation may happen. Okay, the other one is the 10, 11 position. So, if uh, 6, 7 position uh, the cyclization uh, uh, cyclopropanation happens, we end up with a 6 membered ring and if it happens on between the 10 and 11, we are going to get a 10 membered ring. So, obviously, we know 10 membered cyclopropyl derivatives are quite unstable and they are not easily formed. So, we can say the cyclization actually happens between the 6 and 7 double bond. That means, we have a 6 membered uh, derivative that is formed with the cyclopropyl unit. And when this compound is subjected to selenium dioxide uh, oxidation, the exocyclic double bond is getting converted to the corresponding allylic alcohol. So, this is the crucial one. So, we can very clearly say that this is the product that will be formed in this particular case. So, based on that we can identify what is our uh, uh, the right product that is expected. And what are the other competing reactions? As I mentioned, the carbene can also undergo cyclopropanation with the isopropylidine group. So, this is the isopropylidine unit. So, here also the cyclization may take place, but uh, that will result in a 10 membered ring which is highly unlikely. So, that is the reason the cyclopropanation, the carbene insertion will not take place on this particular or the distant double bond, it will only happen in the nearby double bond. So, let us move on to the next problem. So, here also we have a diazo carbonyl compound with the methoxy ether. This is treated with trifluoroacetic acid and we end up with a couple of cyclized product. <coughs> The expected products 1, 2 and 3 are having a tricyclic system and the last one is having simply the replacement of the nitrogen with the trifluoroacetyl unit. So, these are all the 4 different products that are expected in this particular reaction. We are going to find out what is the actual product that will be formed in this reaction. So, the initial step is the formation of carbene because here we are using trifluoroacetic acid. So, under acidic conditions, the carbene is generated with the loss of nitrogen atom. So, we get a carbene here on this particular carbon. As we know, the carbene actually undergoes insertion reaction. Now, we have to find out where the insertion will take place. If we put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, the most preferred cyclization would be probably the 1, 5 cyclization. So, that is one of the things that is possible. But again, we can also, we have seen the carbene can also undergo cyclopropanation on the benzene ring. So, that is also equally possible. So, when there are two competitive reactions, in some cases the aromatic ring which is highly nucleophilic in nature compared to this particular CH carbon undergoes facial reaction. The reason is the carbene is electrophilic, aromatic ring is electron rich. So, obviously, the site for carbene insertion is more pronounced or more likely to happen on the aromatic systems than the CH bond that is the benzylic carbon because the benzylic carbon is not activated, not electron rich. So, when there is a competition between CH insertion and the cyclopropanation, in most of the cases cyclopropanation reactions happens much more effectively compared to the CH insertion reactions. That is very easy to understand because when you have electron rich place, obviously the reaction will take place on that place. So, the carbene in this particular case undergoes a intramolecular cyclopropanation reaction to give a tetracyclic system. So, we end up with a tetracyclic system and this tetracyclic system 
we have a methyl ether and we are running the reaction under TFA conditions that is the trifluoroacetic acid condition. So, the ether here will be easily cleaved to give the corresponding hydroxy derivative in other words we will get the enol derivative. So, the once the enol derivative is formed under acidic conditions what can happen is here we have a cyclic strained system even though we say the cyclopropanation reaction is easily happening, but then we have a tetracyclic system which is highly strained system. So, some change has to happen. So, in that case what will happen is the hydrogen atom is lost and we end up with the shift of bonds which opens up the cyclopropyl system. So, that gives the tricyclic system. Of course, this carbon will have the negative charge and uh, here we are losing a hydrogen as a proton. So, this proton will go and attach here. So, that is the reason we will get a hydrogen atom inserted or removed from this oxygen it is attached here. So, we end up with a tricyclic system as shown here. So, this is the diketone. So, this is a tricyclic diene diode uh, system and this is our product that will be formed in the insertions uh, carbene insertion reaction. And uh, let us move on to the next one. So, here we are going to find out the major product formed in the following reaction. This was asked in June 2016. So, we have a allylic alcohol and uh, this alcohol is treated with uh, diiodomethane in the presence of zinc copper coupled in the first step. In the second step we are using catalytic amount of ruthenium chloride water and sodium periodate. So, two step reactions are carried out on this allylic alcohol. We are going to find out what is the product that will be formed. So, product A, B, C and D are given. If you look at very carefully B, C, D all have a cyclopropyl unit. So, they have cyclopropyl unit and if you look at uh, the uh, derivatives, the starting alcohol is converted to aldehyde in one case, carboxylic acid in another case, carboxylic acid in another case. So, that means we have two different uh, that means the uh, hydroxy unit undergoes oxidation either to aldehyde or to carboxylic acid. And in the another uh, case what we have is we only have a aldehyde there is no cyclopropyl derivative that is formed. So, these are all the four different products and we have to find out what is the correct product that is that will be formed in this reaction. Between product uh, C and D they both have the carboxylic acid unit, but only uh, difference is the arrangement of groups. So, the stereochemistry are little bit changed in the final product. So, let us look at how the reaction actually proceeds. So, the reaction of diiodomethane with the zinc copper coupled leads to the formation of alpha iodomethyl zinc iodide or the intermediate and here a metal carbenoid is probably expected to be involved. So, that is how we have a metal carbenoid like thing uh, like a compound is formed here and uh, this metal carbonate like thing that is the carbon having a methylene unit is added across the double bond. So, this is what uh, uh, this is how the reaction actually proceeds and this reaction is nothing but a cyclopropanation reaction. We are not having a clean carbene like the previous diazo cases. In all the diazo reactions we have a carbene as an intermediate or metal carbonate as an intermediate. But in this particular case we do not have a carbene, but we only have a metal carbonate. So, that is what is given here. So, there is only one carbon because iodomethane is the diiodomethane is the one which is used which has only one carbon. So, a single carbon is added to the double bond. So, that is how the reaction actually proceeds. When you are adding one carbon to a double bond we end up with a cyclopropyl system. So, here what is the reaction occurs is basically the cyclopropanation reaction that is happening and 
in the main case how the reaction actually happens is it is a stereo specific reaction and whenever a three membered ring is formed the, those reactions are mostly stereo specific in nature and the reaction preferably occurs from the less hindered site. So, these are all the two common reactions which are expected in these kind of systems, but there is one small difference compared to the regular systems. In our system we have a hydroxy unit which is having lone pair of electrons. We have a zinc metal which is electron deficient in this particular case. So, what will happen? There is going to be a good uh, coordinative bond or uh, interaction that is going to be formed between the zinc metal and the oxygen's lone pair. So, this is very very crucial because of the presence of the hydroxy unit what happens is the cyclopropanation happens cis to the hydroxyl group because from the same side because when we have the hydroxy unit and the zinc they are from the same side. So, the addition of the cyclopropene or the cyclopropyl unit happens from the same side of the hydroxyl unit. So, that is how this reaction actually happens. It is not happening uh, like the normal less hindered site, but from the site where hydroxy unit is present and here and here a concerted transfer of the methylene unit happens. So, here is the intermediate as shown here and uh, this leads to the cyclopropyl unit that is added here. So, if you look at the hydroxy unit and the methylene unit which is added, they both are on the actually same side. So, that is how we can actually fix the stereochemistry of uh, the carbon and uh, this, since this is a stereo specific reaction, we will end up with only one product. And this reaction is basically called as Simon Smith's reaction. So, the use of uh, diiodomethane and uh, zinc copper couple is the reagent for Smith Simon Smith reaction. And what is the next step? Next step is nothing but the oxidation of the alcohol by ruthenium chloride water and sodium iodide system. So, that oxidizes the hydroxy unit to the carboxylic acid unit and this is the product that will be formed. Because if you look at the cyclopropanation, in the cyclopropanation this methyl and in the starting material when we look at these are in the same side. So, if you look at the starting material this carbon and this methyl unit are on the same side. So, that is the reason when the cyclopropanation happens there is no possibility of this methyl group coming trans to the corresponding hydroxy unit uh, carboxylic acid unit. So, that is the reason our end product cannot have the trans orientation it has to have the cis orientation with the corresponding allylic alcohol unit. So, that is where the product will have the stereochemistry as shown here. Let us move on to the next problem. Here we are going to find out what is the major product that is formed in the following reaction. We have a styrene type derivative is given here and we have some reagent A. We do not know what the reagent A is. We have a cyclopropyl derivative that is formed as an intermediate or the first product and this undergoes reduction with uh, palladium catalyst and the hydrogen gas in methanol to give product B. So, we are going to find out what is the reagent A and the product B. So, there are two different things we are going to find out and this question was asked in uh, December 2015. So, what is the first one? The combination of reagent A is ethyl diazoacetate. So, this can actually be used for the generation of carbene and uh, in the second also second combination also we have the same uh, reagent that is the ethyl diazoacetate and in the third and the fourth we have the sodium hydrate as the base and the corresponding uh, sulfo sulfoxide derivative is given. So, we have to find out what is going to be the right reagent that will be used in stage A 
and then we are also going to find out what is the product B. So, let us look at how the reaction will actually proceed. So, since uh, it is actually given we are going to get a cyclopropyl derivative, a carbene is the most probable or the most uh, uh, easily uh, considerable compound for this reaction. In other words, ethyl diazoacetate may be the source for the carbene and if you look at the product, we also have the ester unit, ethyl ester is present and we only have one carbon that is added extra. So, that means, uh, ethyl diazoacetate which can give the carbene uh, is the most uh, probable reagent that can be used in this particular reaction. So, as we know there is a double bond and we have a carbene. So, what is the carbene that will be formed? CH double bond CO2 ET is the carbene that will be formed. So, this carbene will add to the alkene double bond and we end up with a cyclopropyl derivative. So, the first reagent is ethyl diazoacetate. Then what is the second reaction? So, this second uh, case what happens is the cyclopropyl ester is treated with palladium carbon and uh, hydrogen. So, in this kind of cases what will happen? We are doing a reduction reaction. So, a cyclopropyl ring is also considered like a double bond. So, when we assume that uh, uh, when we can think of a cyclopropyl derivative as a double bond, obviously reduction will uh, open up the cyclopropyl ring. So, that is what going to be our final product. So, what are all the different possibilities that are uh, that can happen? We will start with uh, three different uh, combinations because here the blue color bond and the green color bond and an orange color bond. So, three different colored bonds are given. If the blue color bond is broken, then we end up with this kind of ester and if the green color bond is broken, we end up with this kind of ester. And if the orange color bond is broken, we end up with this kind of ester. So, there are three possibilities uh, which can exist and we have to identify what is the correct bond that will be broken. So, how do we find it out? One very simple thing what we can think of is whenever a cyclopropanation, a cyclopropyl ring is broken, it will the hydrogen will be added from the less hindered site. So, that is the most important thing we have to keep in mind when what is the less hindered site in all the cases. If you look at uh, this bond, the green bond, we have a ethyl ester unit that is present and we also have gem dimethyl. So, this is actually the bulky side. So, that means hydrogenation cannot happen from this side. In other words, the green bond cannot be broken. So, this is ruled out. So, what is the other one? If you look at the orange bond, here again we have the gem dimethyl group. So, that side and we also have another big phenyl unit present here. So, in other words, this is also not the less hindered site. This is highly crowded site. So, the orange bond breaking also is not possible. So, what is the only thing which is left out? We have only the blue bond that can break. So, if you look at here, we have the two methyl uh, two hydrogen atoms that are present apart from the other bulky groups. So, in other words if you look at uh, all the three bonds, we can clearly say the blue bond is the only place where it can easily break because that is the less hindered site compared to the other two bonds. So, this is going to be our final product that will be formed in this reaction. So, the first reagent is nothing but the ethyl diazoacetate and the ring opening or the cyclopropyl uh, groups opening leads to the product as shown here. Let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to find out what is the intermediate that is involved in the reaction as shown below. So, here we have couple of things, we have a diazo unit that is uh, present, diazo compound is uh, given here, we have a photochemical condition and we also have a alkene double bond. So, we already know we have been seeing so far all these reactions. So, when an alkene is uh, present and when a diazo compound is there and when we are using photochemical conditions, obviously the expected thing is a carbene formation 
and when we have a carbene what is the next one to expect and once you have a double bond the carbene will insert across the double bond so that is what we have a cyclopropyl system that is formed so obviously for this reaction it is very easy to identify what is going to be the product uh, the correct uh, uh, intermediate it is going to be the carbene that is going to be the intermediate now we will simply look at how the reaction actually proceeds so first we take the uh, diazo compound. So, this diazo compound undergoes decomposition under photochemical condition because diazo compound can easily undergo uh, decomposition either by thermal conditions or by photochemical conditions or in the presence of transition metal catalyst. So, all the three combinations, uh, all the three uh, systems or the conditions can generate a carbene from a diazo compound. Here we are only using the photochemical conditions. So, that leads to the corresponding carbene derivative. So, the carbene is formed. Once the carbene is formed, we already know there is a double bond uh, or the alkene that is present and this undergoes a cyclopropanation reaction. So, in this particular case as we know the intermediate is nothing but a carbene. Let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to find out the major product formed in the following reaction. What is the major product? This question was asked in December 2012. So, we have a diazo ketone, we have a diazo ketone that is reacted with the silver oxide under photochemical conditions and the second step is methanol. So, there are two steps involved in this reaction. We are going to find out what is the product that will be formed. The first one is an ester, second one is also an ester. The only difference between the first and second is the change in stereochemistry of one of the centers and we also have a cyclic uh, 5 membered ketone and we also have a keto ether. So, these are all the four different types of product that can be formed and this keto ether or which product will be formed we will see uh, when we look at the reaction mechanism. So, the first step is the alpha diazo ketone. This is our starting material. This can be represented in the resonance form. So, as we can draw this resonance like this that means the negative charge will shift between these two nitrogen atoms to uh, equate the positive charge, but then uh, simultaneously this one of the double bond will be shifted towards the carbon. So, we still have the nitrogen, the central nitrogen having the positive charge, but uh, we have a carbon having a negative charge. So, this is the resonance structures which we can draw for this one. And uh, when this is uh, exposed to photochemical conditions in the presence of silver oxide, we actually get the loss of dinitrogen that leads to the formation of a keto carbon. We will see what is a keto carbon and this reaction is basically called the Wolf rearrangement. So, this carbon nitrogen bond is broken towards the nitrogen because we will be losing this as a nitrogen gas. Since the bond is gone with the nitrogen atom, what we will have is we will get the carbene on this particular carbon. So, this is the ketone unit is present here, carbene is here. So, this is the keto carbene. So, once the keto carbene is formed, what it will do is this will undergo 1 2 rearrangement to give a ketene. So, the keto carbene undergoes 1 2 rearrangement to give the ketene as shown here. And there is also another way a concerted mechanism by which we can form the ketene in a single step from the diazo compound or uh, diazo ketone that is also possible. So, this ketene reacts with the solvent methanol. So, the ketene is actually electrophilic in nature. The solvent methanol is nucleophilic. So, this oxygen attacks this particular uh, central uh, the carbonyl carbon and uh, the bond one of the bond is shifted towards this carbon. So, we end up with a methoxy unit attached to the carbon. In other words, we will have the ester unit. There is a hydrogen atom. So, this hydrogen atom will attach to this particular carbon because the negative charge will go on to this particular carbon. 
and uh, this hydrogen will be abstracted by this uh, hydrogen uh, carbon. So, uh, this hydrogen will shift to this one. So, we end up with a ester unit. So, the formation of the ketone, ketone intermediate is highly unstable. So, what happens? This is being attacked by the nucleophilic solvent that is the methanol and here we have a weakly acidic nucleophile that is a methanol unit and that gives a ester. So, this is an example of Wolf rearrangement where we have a keto carbene that is involved and in other words uh, another intermediate is a ketene.